Hello and welcome back to the TC Show. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, tonight we have an outstanding panel to talk about the recent election, which was two days ago here in Massachusetts, and also some financial uh, issues here in Chelmsford. Uh, we also have the chairperson of the Chelmsford Board of Selectmen, who is going to be announcing tonight whether or not she's running for re-election to the board uh, this coming April. So uh, with me tonight on the show, we have Mike Rigney. How are you, Mike? Good, Tom. Uh, great, Glad to uh, be here. It's great that you could be on the show again, Mike. Let's see, it's your fifth time on the show, if I have this correctly. Okay. But a lot I'm of the anniversary up. shows you're on, yes. so every time you come on, you get a big bang for the buck because <laughs> That's right. we enlarge the pictures of the anniversary shows with all the chairmen, or chairwoman, mm -hmm. and then we uh, put them on, my, on the wall of fame. So, and we I have just, cake every time at the it's anniversary the cake. shows. It, yeah. But That's unfortunately, the <laughs> there's no cake tonight, Mike, so, <laughs> so it's not quite up to there, but I think it's going to be a, an equally It'll be a good show, good show I, I think. That's but, right. And so, as everyone knows, Mike is the chairman of the Trumpshed School Committee, and you have been for how many years now, Mike? Uh, this is this, uh, this is my fourth year on the committee, and the second year as chairman. Second year as chairman. How did that happen, Mike? Did, did, did no one else want to <laughs> run three, or something? Three other people voted for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is great, because I know it's a lot of work, more work yeah. being chairman. I think. Yeah, it, 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 you have to you have to find a balance there. Um, a lot of it is about giving other people the space to be uh, to to take their own initiative uh, with the committee. I, I see my role there more as a facilitator uh, than as trying to control the committee. Yes. As you know, with some of the people on the committee, they're difficult oh, yeah. to control. No controlling. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And Mike, also, what do you have? Is it four children, Mike? I do also have four children. Four ch yes. So I don't know uh, how you do all this because you also have a full time job. I think for now. <laughs> is it at Brandon? <laughs> it is. Is yes, that Brandon? I'm a lab manager at Brandon University. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't know how you. Oh, and you moved last year, right? We uh, moved, did you move um, on Bill Ricker Road? Yep, we are at 19 Bill Ricker Road, right across uh, from All Saints. From All Saints? Yeah. Well, we have Peter and Paul on the show tonight, so. <laughs> That's right. Saints, Peter, Paul are here. So. <laughs> Well, uh, it's great to have you on the show, Mike. Thanks, Thanks again, Tom. and I really appreciate you coming here tonight. Nice to we be have here. a lot to talk about, especially with the school budget mm -hmm. and things. And we also have my friend, who's been a while since you've been on the show, John yes. Souza. Good evening, Tom. Hi, John. Hi, John. And John, as everyone knows, John Souza is the finance director here in Chelmsford. Yes. And this is your fourth time on the show, John. So, and I noticed, unfortunately, it's been a while since you've been on the show, right? Just been so busy. I just haven't. But <laughs> thank you yeah. for having me. It's been oh, great. it's always great. In fact. <clears throat> Were you a cemetery commissioner many years ago Way or something? Way back, I was the uh, <laughs> superintendent back many, many years ago. I kind of vaguely, yeah, yeah. remember yeah. that. So, uh, wow. But it's great having you on. Thank now you. that, you know, you're the finance director, and you have finance been for how many years? I'll be completing about seven years this seven December. Years. So. Yeah, and you're yeah. doing a great no, job, thank you. John, too. It's fantastic. Enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks for coming to the phone every time I call up with a question <laughs> about my taxes or something. <laughs> And are explaining, no, you're explaining no, a lot. Or with the we library, remember I was a library trustee yes, and I, I was a treasurer for a couple of years. So I was interfacing with you quite a bit. Yeah, then. they have, the, the library has the tr their trust funds. They do a great job with those. So it's, yes. uh, that helps them out a great deal with projects. Yeah, th th well, thanks for being here, John. My pleasure. And also, it's been a long time for Peter Del Chino. How yeah. are you, Peter? Good, good, Tom. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Usually, you're we see each other on the on rail the bike, trail. Yeah. Bike. Sometimes I zip by and I say, hi, Peter. Or sometimes you see me coming up and you, right. you and your son, right. Greg, right. know it's me, I think, sometimes. Right. But that's always good to see you exercising yeah. and walking. You yeah. with your, your son and your friend, too. Yeah. And this is your also your fourth time, no, fifth time in the show. Mm -hmm. Same with Mike, Mike Rigney. Right. But it's also been a long time for you, it's Peter. I don't know time. why. It's yeah, been I don't so know. long. You haven't called me. Oh. <laughs> 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 My phone's still in yeah. the <laughs> 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 But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's great to have you on the yeah, show. Is, good uh, to be here. Many people in Trump's may know you've been a longtime member of the Republican Town Committee right. in town. And you're also a member of the Republican State Committee, or St Republican yeah. State Committee man, right, right? Right, Which is wonderful. Yep. So that's great. We'll talk about the election right. later on. I, and you're not a town meeting rep, are not you still anymore? anymore? No, 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 but you I used to been. be. I used to be, and yeah. I used to be on the Board of Health for many years, over 30 years. That's right, yeah. Your name was on the ballot all the time, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Every three I, did, years I didn't run this time, but I, I Oh, finally, that's good to give somebody a chance yeah. after, what, 30 years? How Thir many? 36. Oh, yeah, it's good to give somebody else a chance. Yeah. <laughs> The pay is too low on yeah, that job I know, anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> on all these jobs, it's pretty right. low. Except, well, John maybe get paid a little more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for being here, Peter. And now we, we have Paul for the first time on the show. How are you, Paul? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. 
In fact, you used to live across the street from me. I at did, Drew's yeah, Circle. Right? I didn't circle. see you too much. Yeah. You're probably always working and stuff. But uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, I used to see your mother, Valerie Diggs, yeah. uh, at our neighborhood parties yeah. all the time and everything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so, Paul, is it Mih Mihalides? How do you pronounce yeah, it? Yeah, Mihalides. Mihalides. Yeah. So, first time on the show, Paul. Thank yeah. you for being here, first of all. And oh, you, pleasure. you have an illustrious uh, resume here. I won't read the whole thing, <laughs> but. You're an associate professor at Emerson College, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Could I ask what you're teaching there? I teach in media studies, so oh. I do um, courses on digital media, media and citizenship, politics and media, oh and um, God, yeah, like social networks, kind of. just like this show, yeah. So I don't give me a big critique tomorrow, sure. though. I can <laughs> sure. you right now. Tom, you know, I've been teaching this class for 20 years, yeah. and here's what you did wrong, boom, boom, right. boom. And also, uh, Paul is an associate director at an engagement lab. That's not for men or women getting married, right? No, 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 not yet. <laughs> no, no. It's a lab that we um, we do a lot b between um, technology engagement and the use of media to have a voice. So um, oh. we do a lot with youth and designing games for them to be part of their civic and community processes. We've worked globally in throughout Africa and helping their communities there with um, health and water and safety and. Um, yeah, Did so you actually go there? To uh, I've been, yeah, I've been around working on projects. Um, yeah, in Europe and Africa and Asia. So that's fair. Yeah. And who who funds that engagement? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the fundraising, as Mike probably knows, a lot of the fundraising comes from us as faculty. We write a lot of grants. We talk to organizations. Oh. We work with the Red Cross, the United Nations, the World Bank. So the faculty, part part of Emerson College The faculty, faculty part of us. So yeah. this is part of the IC associated yeah. with that. Yes. Yeah. Emerson, that's it. That's where Jay Leno went to college, right? And many, yeah. many uh, actors, yep. actresses, or yeah, you know, and comedians, and yeah. it's really yeah. wonderful, right there in Boston, right, right? downtown Boston. Yeah, it's a school that's devoted mm -hmm. to communication and the arts. Wow. So we have a really kind of strong niche, and we're right on the common. It's a pretty vibrant place. So. Wow! And uh -huh. there was oh yeah, you're also the director of the Salzburg Academy of Media and Global Change. Yeah. Yep. What's that? Is That's that a similar uh, thing? It's oh. a similar thing. That's a eight for eight years ago that started, and that program is we bring uh, about seventy-five young um, young college students from about uh, twenty different countries around the world for one month to Salzburg, Austria, and we really work on um, trying to build networks for social progress and tolerance. So they'll come together from literally Latin America and Africa, Middle East, Asia, the United States, and and we talk a lot about um, how you can use media to help better better communities and better life. So sustainability, human rights, um, better access for citizens to have safe water and and and, and so on. And, and it's it's yeah, a really fun program. Do you go there every year to Austria? Yeah, I'm there a couple months of every year. Oh, yep, you're so lucky. Salzburg. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, my, my wife and young... You go to Austria every yeah, year? My wife and young kids don't think I'm so lucky when they're left at home and I have to travel uh, that much. They but I'm happy. So. I'm surprised that I would think they would think you were lucky, and yeah. why can't you take <laughs> us? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. They come once in a while. Isn't they that do. wonderful? Yeah. Austria, to me, I imagine it was a very beautiful place. I've been to Europe, but not Austria. Yeah, it's a beautiful, Salzburg is a really beautiful town, and it's, oh it's, a, real, it's a fortunate um, place to work. And the organization that we work with there is, was started in the, wake of, um, in the wake of World War II as a, uh, it's actually, uh, it's a palace where the Sound of Music was based. Mm -hmm. And oh. the palace is now used to, um, bring together different leaders and youth leaders to work on um, avoiding conflict and 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 war, um, and any type of global problems. And they and so it works in business and in industry and and in environment. And we do the media aspect of it. But it's a really fascinating place. Wow. And I'm, I'm I'm I feel fortunate to be able to work with them. It's wow. a real pleasure. Yeah. Well, we're all fortunate that you're on the show. I'm fortunate all of you are on this show. And I'll introduce Pat next. Sure. But thank you very much. First time I show. Hopefully the first event. Do you live nearby, Paul? Or uh, I do live, you, did you have a way? Yeah, I used to live here, and we moved to uh, Hamilton, Hamilton Wenham. My oh, wife a beautiful is, uh, town. It's a beautiful yeah. town. My wife teaches um, at the Masconomet, um schools. She's a Spanish teacher. So we oh moved up God. near her, and I get the commute. Um, oh, so. good. So it's a little commute. So I'll only invite you when it's really right. important. <laughs> <I didn't, laughs> no, but when okay. I feel you'd be interested. But no, thank you. Thank it's you a pleasure for to making be here. the time to be here today, Paul. Pleasure. And we also have my friend <coughs> Pat Wojcic with us. Say, how are you, Pat? I'm doing okay. And as everyone knows, you're the chairperson of the Trump's Board of Selectmen. You think everybody knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody <laughs> might tune into this show, which is like three people. But <laughs> no, no, no. Hundreds and maybe thousands. Okay. But I'm just exaggerating with the three. I hope. <laughs> So, Pat, though, this is your 23rd time on the show, which is amazing. It is amazing. There's only nine people in the 20 years I've been doing the show, almost 20 years, that have hit over 20 appearances. Mm -hmm. Now, that's good. You were, you know, 
a, a town leader for many years, a selectman for quite a while, town meeting representative for mm -hmm. quite a while, you know, and I've known you for so long, right. so, and so, but you're tied exactly with your brother Charlie for some reason. It's like you're neck and neck with Charlie, the, 23. I think there's a conspiracy going on here. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, right. I don't know, between you and him or something. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how this is happening, but. So uh, later on in the show, not now, but we'll talk about whether you'll run for re-election on the Board of Selectmen uh, this coming April. Okay. And the campaign would begin in January, I guess, or December. So, um, oh, you're also a town meeting representative, Precinct 5. Are you still That's a correct. rep? Yes, yeah? I am. Great, yeah. great, wonderful. And also, I know you're a big, big a veteran, so uh, this coming Tuesday, we have Veterans Day, right? That's right. Everybody could meet at the Veterans Park on North Road near McCarthy School mm -hmm. at 11 a.m. We have a wonderful, they have a wonderful ceremony, yes. which I usually attend every year, and Pat always does. Mm -hmm. And there's very often over 200 people that yeah, attend Yeah, we always had to get a good turnout. It's supposed to be good weather this, this oh, year. Oh, that's so. good, because I've frozen so many times. But I know. That, Last year wasn't too bad. Not but, too but, bad, no. But some, some years, years it's yes. bad. Yes. But yeah, we have a few nice speeches, and it's always nice to have some coffee and donuts afterwards That's by right. the Rotary yeah. Club. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll be there again I'm this year. I'm pretty sure they will be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here again, well, Pat. Thanks for having me. And maybe if we could start the show, and this will be an open discussion after maybe Micah uh, introduces what's going on with the uh, school department budget, which is like the biggest issue in Chelmsford in this right now, and maybe for a number of years. It's quite a big issue. Uh, so what's, if you could tell us what's going on with the budget, because you just had a tri-board yeah. meeting a few days ago. We're taping this on November 6th, so you had a tri-board meeting uh, four, three days ago on Monday, and we're taping this on a Thursday. And uh, so if you could let us know what's, what's going on, Mike, and what happened ultimately or initially. Well, yeah, just to, to start from the beginning, um, we had a budget overrun in, in FY14, uh, and the business manager improperly moved uh, some of those bills into FY15. This was uncovered when uh, the town had its regular annual uh, audit done. Um, they uncovered that uh, that issue. They they passed it along. Uh, the first job is to was to figure out exactly what the extent of the of the damage was. Um, and so, just last week we had a tri board meeting with a with a presentation. I'm sorry, was that Monday? <laughs> Monday, we had a presentation uh, from an outside auditor um, who works with Melanson and Heath, had come in um, and gone through the books. <coughs> and at that tri-board meeting, his report was that there were some $875,000 worth of bills that had been moved out of FY14 into, into FY15. Uh, additionally, there were $141,000 worth of bills that had come from FY, that had been incurred in FY14 uh, and had been flagged by the, by the town accountant um, when, when they were tried to move through the system. Um, so they've been held and they are unpaid bills, which is a, a special category under, under Mass General Law. Um, by looking at, at, at the trends in the, in the spending um, and, and by reassigning um, the bills that had come out of FY14 and been paid in FY15. The, the, account, uh, the auditor was able to reassign those bills to where they should have been placed in FY14 so that we could get a clean look at the FY15 budget. Oh. He also found that there was approximately a $350,000 uh, projected overrun or, or deficit in the FY15 budget. Um, that was Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday night, uh, we got a new set of numbers. The, um, the projected overrun in the FY15 budget, uh, or the projected deficit, is uh, considerably larger. Um, I, it's, a, it's about $550,000. It was $259,000 worth of additional uh, projected um, expenses that, that were estimated. A, a great number of those came from um, the, uh, the utility um, accounts. Um, we're still we're still in the middle of trying to untangle those entirely. It looks like not not all expenses have been assigned in a um, kind of standard way, a predictable way. Um, for example, the, the the telephone line in the, the it's marked telephone superintendent. Uh, the bill was I believe a hundred thousand um, dollars. The superintendent does not 
spend that much on telephone usage. Uh, so we're trying to we're trying to drill down and figure out where why those numbers are the way they are. But at the end of the day, we're, we'd only be reclassifying those, and the bottom line won't change. Um, more kind of more disturbingly, the energy usage does not appear to have dropped um, at the high school and the, and the central administration building, even after most, the, the ESCO project has been mostly completed. The, the yeah. um, solar panels still are not quite online, and I think John might want to talk about that a little bit. I know there's, there's some discussion there about how exactly they're going to be used. But there seems something, something didn't behave the way that it was predicted to in the, in the energy usage as well. Um, and so the, the difference between Monday night and Tuesday night was the auditor getting better projections for, for the energy costs uh, for um, 2015, FY15. So that puts us in a situation tonight going into a FinCom's meeting. Um, oh, which is tonight, where, okay, Thursday which is, yeah, 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 which is later this evening. Um, where we are headed to a special town meeting on the 17th that will consider the um, disp disposition of the $141,000 worth of unpaid bills. Um, again, there, there are some intricacies there that we can go into later, but, but essentially we're going to have to ask for that money uh, from, from free cash or, or available funds. Uh, the town manager has assembled a, a fairly extensive list of possible or, or of actual uh, revenue sources that are available at this point. Um, after the special town meeting, that's going to be followed immediately by a continuation of the fall town meeting. Yeah. Uh, as you'll recall, a number of those warrant articles were put right. off. Basically, all the warrant articles dealing with the disposition of free cash uh, yes. uh, and available funds. Yes. Um, the schools are now in a position where we are going to have to request assistance from town meeting uh, about $730,000 worth during the fall town meeting uh, session. There is, a, there is money available there. Um, there have been a number of other things that have been proposed to, to spend that money on. Uh, the town manager, I think, released his recommendations uh, for a number of these this afternoon, and I think he'll speak more about that at a FinCom meeting tonight. Okay, wonderful. So that's where we are right yeah. now. And um, just before we go on and open it up for everybody, um, one of the big controversies in town was what happened with three personnel mm -hmm. that were were let go. So, uh, as I understand it, you you mentioned that an audit was done. I don't know was it that the did it come out in June or something of this usually, year? Usually, we have a townwide financial audit, and they okay. usually come out. They actually did most of their work the first two to three weeks in September. And so that's so when this audit came. That's but, they oh. started right after Labor Day. Uh, okay. They came out and they started. They did their because every year. By law and by policies, and we have to have a financial audit. They started doing what's called invoice testing, which is where they look, they pull re invoices at random yeah. and look at the dates on them when they were processed. They kind of follow them through the system. Yeah. And based on what they found, they found a large number of um, very early dated invoices from the prior fiscal year. So yes. it, with auditor, with an audit firm, and you want them to do this, the more when they find things like that, they start to dig a little deeper and a little deeper yes. and keep yeah. going. So that's when it was found out. And they actually, in yeah, they actually spent an extra week because they when yeah. they started realizing yeah. the scope of it, they so they. So that was communicated to the superintendent shortly thereafter the audit. I believe the the first official communication was in a, a leadership meeting uh, that involved the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, uh, myself. Um, the two two people from the firm of Powers and Sullivan, including Rich Sullivan, who is the principal, uh, the town manager, the town accountant, the uh, town treasurer, and the chairman uh, chairwoman, excuse me, of the board of selectmen and the business manager. Oh, and the and the business manager. Yes. Oh, that's, at that time that's right. The business manager was there at, this at was that meeting. Approximately mid September, late September. Ooh, I'm gonna say late, late September. Oh, yeah, late September. I, I, the so twenty second sticks in my oh, head. Oh, maybe yeah. about some, somewhere on there. So could I ask when? The superintendent decided to let these three personnel go. Or I I would I would say that at that initial meeting, yeah. um, this was presented as a dispute rather than a, a, a cut and dried yeah. uh, situation. I, that that I, I Mr. Sullivan came in with a with a very specific um, approach 
that was that was it was clear. He 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 was not vague in any way. He's the auditor, right? He's One the of auditor. the auditors, yeah. Um, yeah. The business manager suggested that it that it was not quite as dire a situation as it seemed. Um, at the end of the meeting, there there had been some back and forth, some discussion. There was there was at least a tentative plan to go back and and try to fix as much as possible using revolving accounts. Uh, I would say the week after, the week following that, Mr. Sullivan repeated his uh, presentation to the the finance committee, um, and the the finance committee. Um, I think was extremely disturbed by what they heard. Uh, about after the meeting with uh, Mr. Sullivan and before the the meeting with FinCom, yeah. the superintendent worked with his staff to to put some cuts in place. Um, there were the layoffs of, of three administrators. There were a couple of. Uh, Potential hires uh, or roles that that uh, that had gone empty that were not that were not replaced. Uh, budget freezes were put in place for for um, to the extent that they could be. Uh, I would say the the meeting at FinCom, um, the situation took a turn towards being far more serious than than what had than what had been perceived. I think at the leadership meeting. Um, I think shortly after that, the the cuts were announced. The belief was still, though, that we had a reliable number. <coughs> that number has obviously not proven to be reliable. Could I ask one quick question about that? That a lot of people are wondering. Now, Kathy McWilliams, she's is, she's a, a professional financial manager of some sort, she right? Is, she is an accredited school business uh, manager. A accredited school business manager who has experience in these kinds of things, right? How do you think this happened? Do you think it was just an oversight on her part? Or, I, I'm or not, no I am idea? not going to speculate you, at this you have time. No idea, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I know people get tired of hearing this, oh, no, 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 but, yeah. but there, yeah. there are things that I just am not oh, going to yeah. talk about right now. Yeah, I see, yeah. And by the way, just everybody home probably knows, but Kathy McWilliams, as business manager, has been put on paid administrative leave. I have not oh, said oh, oh, that. No, we're the not superintendent even sure if has not said that. The right, Lowell right. Sun reported okay. had a report <laughs> right. that was yeah. based on two unnamed sources. The Lowell Sun then confirmed that report a few days later uh, with two more unnamed sources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We so have we, we have not we but have not said anything one yeah, way. Yeah, but or she hasn't been showing up That's for right. either work or these meetings that I've been watching That's on correct. TV. So and, she's and not And we there. have we she's we not, do have a consultant in place yeah. uh, who's a, who is assisting both with the with the audit the 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 ongoing forensic audit um, and basically with the with the day to day uh, management of, of the the school finances, um, Mr. Frank Antonelli. Uh, who is uh, who had been uh, for for a good many years the business manager of the Bill Ricca public school system? Oh, I see. Great, thank you. Well, why don't I leave it open for discussion? I, I don't want to. And mm -hmm. sure. Um, well, any, any kind yeah, of? just to, to add to what Mike said, um, mm -hmm. the the um, John Sullivan, the forensic audit with Melanson Heath, he completed um, his the first stage of his work. So as we, as it was said, he presented a report to the tri board meeting earlier this week. That his next stage is he's now, and basically the first phase, what he was trying to do is do some trend analysis. So he wanted to look at where where do we end up with fiscal year 14? Let's look at the you know three years or so prior to that, and then try to project where are we going to end up in 15? Because when you start pushing expenses from the prior year into 15, you're gonna we, you know you're gonna have a problem in 15. Yes. So he completed the trend analysis. Now his next phase is to delve into more what I would consider school processes, which, processes which would be um, school payroll, um, reporting and tracking of revenues. There's a number of things he's going to look at. So Wonderful. that'll be the next phase. Wonderful. And and we will follow up his report when, once we have his uh, report in hand on on the processes. Uh, we will follow up with another review from MASBO, which is the uh, Massachusetts Association of school business officers um, to get their perspective on it. it we have no choice Ma Chelmsford must build one of the best business 
offices, school business offices in the state. We that's that's the only choice at this point. Yes. Um, so we're yeah. gonna go. We're gonna talk to everybody we can talk to. We're we're gonna we're gonna benchmark against the best the best systems in the state, yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna become one of them. Great, great. I think what is difficult is not to jump to conclusions when you know there's something wrong, but you don't know exactly what it is, yeah. and. It's, it's too easy to speculate, but you know, and again, you've got to hold your fire until all these audits are completed and you know, you get as much information. But I, I know, you know, the average uh, resident is looking at it and they see this big deficit and they go crazy, you know, right. it's just. Yeah. I, think, I think that, I mean, I think, um, you know, from that civic perspective, um, you know, I think the, and it's it's a because it's a really complex situation, and you have to have if you don't have full information, it's really hard to speculate. Right. But from the town's perspective, I think what you see with the people is that, um, you know, that it, it's hard to kind of it's hard to just kind of listen to this this unknown and unnamed kind of these numbers that are speculative, and then there's so much speculation that happens with all this, but there's not um, there hasn't been that dialogue because there can't be. So right. um, and you know, in in a sense, it, it's kind of that whole idea of the values and the accountability because they see the cuts and then. And, the, and then the story unfolds after the cuts. Yeah. So then the question becomes, you know, when this happened, if you stopped and, and, and did things, um, or, and then talked to the town and let them know where you were. But so I think the way that it, why there's all the discord, I think, is because um, you know, it, the, what announced it all was these cuts. And yeah. then after that, it was thought to be manageable, then it wasn't. So I think, you know, part of it, um, Part of that is just kind of that, you know, you see a community get shocked. And then, and then the other part, I think, is the, the idea about, you know, who's going to come, come forward and, and talk about this. And, and there really hasn't, I mean, it's been the school committee I've, I, I would commend on this, you know, having to take so much without, you know, without even really trying to gather the data, keep everything at bay, and then also try to find solutions to this, um, while at the same time having no one to, to, to be there to say, you know what, this is... This is something that you know. This is something that 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 we're going to do. This is something that I'm responsible for. This is, and that has to come from somewhere. But I, I'm not sure it has yet. And I think that's what I think that's what the citizens of Chelmsford are really at this point. Um, you know, I think, and I think that's that's what's driving some of the the discord you see. And it's, and especially you know whenever you deal with cutting of administrator positions, right. you know, I think I think if it were saying that this was our deficit, these are the numbers and this is one of the actions. I think people would it'd be unfortunate, right. but that's life, and we understand that. Um, and you know, but schools are schools are communities. Schools are. This is the pillar of the the community, and this is what you said, which is what we all want. I mean, we you know are so proud to be from this place and right. to have gone through here, and that um, when that action happens without clarity, I think it really I think it really shocks the system, yeah. and and I think it's you know, and I think there still has to be that kind of that idea about you know that. There has to be some type of responsibility that people can look to. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. We, yeah. we do as a school committee. Um, we, we have been in a situation where we've not only had uh, imperfect information, but, but also real restraints on, right. on what we can say. That's not going to last forever. We are getting to the point now where the information is really, mm. it, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, projecting a, a deficit in FY15, it's always a little iffy until you go through the end of the year. But we have good people in place, people who are highly regarded, um, highly respected, you know, far beyond Chelmsford's borders. Yeah. Um, I, I think we can listen to what they have to say and, and feel some assurance that we're getting finally to bedrock there. So the, the ground is not shifting underneath us anymore. The other part of it is that as this starts to, th a lot of this is a process, and as it plays out, some of the constraints on what we can say and can't say are going to go away, yeah. and we're going to have to step forward um, yeah. and and be proactive in in kind of reestablishing that conversation with yes. the community. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? I'm just going to mention. I think yeah. part of the reason that was it was shocking to a lot of people, and and I just want viewers to know. I think it's come out at meetings as neither the town manager, myself, the town accountant, and I know even many members of the school committee were never advised by a certain individual of the magnitude of these problems. Oh. Had we received some type of notice, you know, would it, it still would have been a problem, but we could yes. have worked to resolve it. So then what you had is you had during summer break, the new fiscal year starts July 1st, summer break, most of the staff is, on, is out from the schools. They come back, they assume it's going to be a normal year, and then had that information 
come out sooner, maybe yeah. some planning could have been done and certain staff may have, <coughs> you know, if you're going yes. to do make cuts, then they could have been made over the summer or, or at least, or the, you know, yeah. that, I think that's where yeah. the yes. shock came uh, from. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, I think, and, and I think part of it too is that, and because all, m most of this is now public and it's public record, so people, you know, so what we've seen is that people go in and they look at the contracts and then they say, mm -hmm. well, here's this contractual thing, which is now, it's not, I know the inform you can't talk about it, but now it's in the public. And then, you know, and I would say that idea about like if, if you know, that in the end of the day, it falls on the responsibility of the people who have to sign those. And so I think of the school committee, you know, in, in my work, I have to be responsible for, for signing budgets and seeing them come in as well for the lab and our global project. And mm -hmm. um, it, seems, it seems that, you know, that the, the board, that the, the folks that I report to don't need to say like, well, what is this? They, they trust, like if you have, a, you have people that have been put in place because you trust mm -hmm. their experience. And, and so it shouldn't, the onus shouldn't be on a board to say, well, we have to go through these stacks line by line. But I think that, but I, but I do think what has happened, what has happened in this situation is um, that one of the administrators is on leave and the reports are saying has retained a lawyer, which does not sound good. And that's <coughs> in the public space. Again, who knows? Yeah. Um, I, we don't even know what the condition is, but I mean, this is what this is what this is the town's perspective, right? This Absolutely, is, and, and then the, and I understand that right. that when you're on, I, I have a certain perspective right. on right. events. Yeah. I understand that's that exactly that's right. not a, a widely shared perspective. That's exactly it, right, and the system is almost designed that way. I have to I have to understand that. I have to make yeah, allowances for right. that. The other thing is, I'd say that you talk about a, a, the community. Yeah. I, I think that's true, and when you have a change like this. It's almost a grieving process that people have to work through right. different stages That's right. at it. And and again, I think those of us who, who have been there for a few more weeks, yeah. we're a little bit farther along sometimes. Um, yeah. And and so you have to be you have to be respectful yeah. of, of where people are and recognize that as long as everyone is trying to to understand it and and behaving yeah. in, or acting in good faith, yeah. um, making an honest yeah. effort, then you have to have the con then you have to accept that you have to hear what people right. have to say and yes. I, but, and I think that and I think that's where like the, the the lack of dialogue is where you know like I think at the school committee meeting you know I was kind of saying that like how surprised we were at the magnitude now this was blinds and it's and it's you know that the, that those when the folks that are there like when the when they're watching this at home and the folks that are the ones who are signing these things are saying how blindsided that to the town cre obviously creates a narrative combined with the decision before any of this came out to just to, to cut the three positions, and I th so I think again, I think it's it's this it's a storm, and I think there's so much that's still pending. It's a grieving yeah. process, but it's also you know as you know from Monday night to Tuesday night the the deficit <laughs> rose went two hundred fifty nine thousand dollars went to five eighty five, and yeah. and then and then on top of that now you have the 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 laid off positions, and mm -hmm. and and that's really the. That's really what's gotten people to the core. If this was just a deficit that emerged because of one certain thing, and people said, you know, this this is this falls with me, I'm going to fix it, or else we'll find mm -hmm. another way. But what's happened is you have people sitting at home, you have people that have been blindsided that have been leading this, and 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 it's and rightfully so. I think the town the town I think rightfully so needs to. Um, you know, wants to see their, they, they always talk about accountability and leadership and responsibility. And I think, that, I think, so for me, all the numbers get swept aside and, and someone who studies this for a living, it really is about what are the, what are the, who's, what are the accountabilities, what are right. the values, what's the level of responsibility that the town wants to, um, that the town wants to uphold and how do you, how do you bring the town through with you to get back to a space where Chelmsford can be one of the renowned high schools that we know it is, or even the public school system mm -hmm. for, for all that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's I, important. I think what's very difficult too is when you lay off three people, it personalizes it. And these yeah. are three people who had nothing to do with the problem. And yet, if you're the chief executive, if you're the superintendent, and you've got this deficit there, and you think, well, I gotta try and address it, and you know, at that point, if you, you lay up a few people, it's not that you want to do it, but you're thinking, you know, I got to do something. And, yeah. and I mean, there's no at that point, there's no good solutions. Yeah. If you don't get rid of anyone, it's even worse. But if you do personalize it, and that's not good, so right. you know, it's like but it's guess, a lose lose. And I guess the question for me is like that that the because and this is I think where the sour spot becomes is. Is if it if the if the deficit were here and you'd say all right well we need to do this 
regardless of like whether contractually it's mm -hmm. okay to do that. Um, and that would get us mm -hmm. to here. But so what happened was we're going to act like, and it's and nobody likes to see people laid off. I I, I understand that completely. And and the and obviously you know there's also the talk of how the layoffs were handled and and so on and so forth, which we can talk about. I'm fine to talk about that as well. Um, but then so what happened was laid off goes to here, and then all of a sudden it goes right. to here. So you then you say. question, you know. What's the, what's the value of doing that when this problem has now spiraled to another level, which puts extra emphasis on why, why would you do that? Like, so the alternative might be to have a, a, a talk about, mm -hmm. okay, so this is what's happening. We need an audit in here. We're going to freeze these things. Mm -hmm. Because now it seems like those three cuts were arbitrary, and they didn't do anything to reduce the... Yeah, and then you have now you have the audit costs and the costs of the, the right. interim manager, and you have the other costs that are now kind of eating into the... So I think that's another thing that I think uh, from a town perspective has, has really kind of uh, in, yeah. impacted the, the situation. So. Yes, yeah. Great. Any other comments? Um, I can just make, you oh. know, throw in my two cents okay. worth. Well, you know, a lot of it has already been said, but, you know, I think one of the, the, the things that, that Paul said, the, the word trust is so important in this situation. And, and I think the, the trust, it was betrayed, you know, several yeah. months ago, and, and that's what needs to be restored. And, yeah. and it's difficult to do that. But, uh, you know, I applaud Mike and, and the school committee for the efforts that they're making to, to hold themselves <coughs> accountable. And, and as, as Mike said, to take the steps that they have to to make Chelmsford um, you know, to, to make the perception true that we have one of the best school systems in the state. Yes. Um, it's going to take some work. Um, it's going to, you know, hopefully the, the credibility will, will, you know, be back up to the yeah. level it was before. I mean, I know it's taken a hit. Yeah. Um, everybody's uh, aware of that. Um, so, and, and that's how you're going to restore that trust is the accountability right. and, the, and the steps that you take going forward and, and the transparency. And I see that a lot, a lot now, and I think it's definitely going to help. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And I, and I, I and one, oh, I'll just add one more yeah. point before, before moving on is that, that, you know, what, what really inspired me and, and also is frustrating is that, you know, you had, you even had students coming to these meetings on behalf of students with petitions and, and, um, and, and that shows that this is not just something that's up here on the financial level, but that, you know, that the students of Chelmsford are invested in this and that's, that's almost the biggest compliment the school system mm -hmm. can get. Um, that 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 they want to have their voice heard, and I, you know, and my only wish, I'm sure it's yours too, is that you could, you know, I, I felt bad for the students. They come, they talk, and then they don't, they don't get her. She's talking about these things that matter to them, and 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 I felt like heartsick for them, than not getting a response, not having someone, you know, like if if they are gonna, you know, if the learning commons is going to be, um, you know, kind of put to rest for a year, it, it seems to happen to be fun be, be um, organized by other people, you know, that when someone says this is a real problem, that someone should have to, I feel like someone should want to respond to that. And, and you know, and, and, if, and, if the, and if they did choose to make those cuts, I would say that they should have probably had a plan for it in place beforehand and not, not after. And I think that was another thing that really stung the students. And this yeah. is, you know, and I don't know how that trust gets repaired. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it can. I mean, that's the big question. If, the, you know, asking the town to bail this money out, and I think that's, a, you know, that's the thing the town has to do. But yeah. the question is how, it's the hard choices that you're going to have to mm -hmm. make. How do, you, how do you even, after that, if you just bail them out, what does is, what is regaining trust mean? That, you know, I, I don't know if it's just new processes are going to do that or what's going to happen. I think that's going to mm -hmm. be the the hardest choices that the school committee in the town has to make. Has a decision been made with the learning commons, by the way, Mike, in terms of whether it's going to continue? There's been no, oh. I mean, there's been no real change in it ex aside mm -hmm. from the staff. I see. But, but it's still Obviously, there. The, the, you know, yeah. It, yeah. the staffer, uh, uh, they make it what it is. Yeah. That that the, it's not being shuttered. It's not being yeah, right. it's not being put down. So it's it's still being used. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it it it's going to find a new identity. Yeah. It was going to it was always going to have to find a new identity. Uh, the the transition has not been the one that was yeah. expected right. or hoped right. for. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, just before we move on, I just want to quickly compliment you as a chairperson of the school committee. Uh, because I watched that two and a half hour public input session mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and also the school committee where Paul spoke and mm -hmm. your your sister spoke, your father, mm -hmm. your stepfather, and um, I, they were really exciting television, by the way, and, and very interesting. I mean, I learned a lot there. I heard from the mm -hmm. students and Paul and so many people, 
But I'd like to commend you and the school committee uh, for chairing it with respect for everybody who spoke. Mm -hmm. You didn't interrupt people. You didn't start arguing with them. And you listened to them, and you let them say what they had to say in a very important matter. And, and that's not insignificant. It was very oh. nice of you and good of you to do that. And I showed, showed true leadership skills, and I commend you for that, Mike. Well, I, I thank you for point. that. But, but, again, but I will say that I, I think that's the minimum. The, right. That it, it, you, you talk about our processes alone going to yeah. restore trust. No, part of it is going to be that that we're willing to listen to people. Yes, and that's a, it, it, again by itself that won't that won't fix the problem. No. but we can't fix it without doing that. Yes, that's and right. I, I appreciate it though because I've been to, with other some other boards. Sometimes they time people and you know three minutes or whatever. Yeah. And it's just not enough mm -hmm. time. So thank you for that and. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe if we could go with Pat Wu just now. Uh, Pat, um, hopefully you could announce whether or not you're running for re-election to the Board of Selectmen uh, this, this year. Well, do you think I should give people a chance to, to lay odds on it? or? You know? <laughs> 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 well, uh, no, I don't no. think so. I think tonight <laughs> would be a great time, if you can, uh, to let people know whether or not you've decided to run for re-election. To I think you've been a select person for what about six years or seven years now, or something. Well, I was first elected in two thousand seven. Seven. But okay. if you recall, okay. there was There's a little a gap there gap, in two thousand. In, in but it's been about six years in office, approximately. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, right. yeah. yeah. About that. So uh, yeah, my my intention is to run for re-election. It's probably the worst kept secret in town. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it is. <laughs> <laughs> now it is, but that's good. I mean, no, I don't think a lot of people knew for sure. I'm sure right. many many people didn't. So yeah. so you decided to run for real? Could you could you tell us why or just what your goals are for the next term if re-elected? Okay. Well, um, I I think I've. I've been effective the yeah. the years that I've been in um, in in office. Um, a lot has been accomplished. Um, it's always with a team. There's a f there's five members of the board of selectmen, so yes. very little is done in on an individual basis. Um, and I think I collaborate well with the oth other members of the board. Uh, all the other members that I've I've worked with, which have been probably you know uh, ten or twelve yeah. by this by this point. Um, I, I I enjoy going out and meeting with. Uh, uh, the residents of town. I mean, I, I see them all the time, and um, sometimes they they come to me with major issues. Um, sometimes it's not so so major, but you know, I I listen to everything they have to say. If it's something I think I can do something about, then I'll follow up and you know try to resolve the the issues. Um, as far as uh, you know, goals for the for the coming years, um, I I think in in this position, there's there are very few you know discrete goals that you can set. That are going to be accomplished, you know. Say, you know, okay, you know, like three stop signs or something are going to be added on different streets or something like that, because it, it's it's just an ongoing process. Um, one thing that I'm a big proponent of is regionalization, you know, regionalized services, and something that we've been talking mm -hmm. about for a few years has been a regional uh, emergency call center, a 911 center. Um, that's something I would like to see accomplished in you know yeah. in the not too distant future. Um, it's like I said, we've been talking about it for a while, and yeah. um, I, it, it, you know, it, it would save us money. I think it would give us better service. It would also um, enhance the the uh, uh, the career opportunities for people who are dispatchers. Right now, at our police station, we have I don't know, maybe three or four dispatchers, and they really don't have a career path because we don't have like a you know a manager of that uh, that department. Um, so I think it would help help them. I think it would help the community. Um, I mean, as far as any any others, like I said, it's just whatever we can do to make Chelmsford a better community. Yes. Um, we in the next uh, couple of months we'll be having a, a ribbon cutting for our new fire headquarters. Yes, uh, it's the last Saturday of this month, right? Um, it's it's probably going to be in December. Oh, it might be in de December like, now. Yeah, it looks a, like yeah, a little bit yeah. of a delay. Yeah. So, um, you know, we we renovated the uh, the clubhouse over at the golf course. Yeah. Um, we've, you know, while I've been on the board, we've uh, renovated the uh, North Old North Town Hall and the Center Town Hall. Uh, so there's been a lot of things going on. We had the ribbon cutting for the uh, for the rail trail while I was oh, yes. uh, while I've been on the board. So I've right. seen a lot of improvements, and I want to keep seeing that going forward. Um, I mean, obviously, with uh, you know, we don't like to have to raise taxes, but um, we haven't had to have an override for yeah. for any of that. that uh, that's in the you know since I've been on the board, so that's yeah. a, that's also a good that's thing. A good thing yeah. mm. um, so you know that's I, I I feel like I can be effective, and I want to continue 
in, in that in that vein. Great. Well, thanks, Pat, and good luck with the reelection campaign. Well, thank you for giving sure me the opportunity. I'm sure you're going to work hard, uh, mm -hmm. not only during the campaign, but if you're reelected. Mm -hmm. And as everyone watching probably knows, George Dixon is also up for reelection next year. Right. But uh, he's scheduled to be on my, this show in January. Uh -huh. uh, he said he hasn't made up his mind yet uh, to announce anything publicly. Mm -hmm. And I have so many other shows that have already been booked. So, so he'll probably announce before January. I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but that's fine. And he'll be on the show the end of January, I think. Uh -huh. So thanks, Pat, and good luck with everything. And well, uh, thank you. We'll see how many. You have 23 appearances so far. We'll have to see if we could double that in the next 10, <laughs> 10 20 years. OK. <laughs> Of course, I need to double the next 20 years okay. come to think yeah. of it. That may not be so easy, but we're, I'm working on it with all my bike. I'm just, I'm over 2,500 miles biking now so far this Very year. Congratulations. Five more miles and I'll hit a new personal That's record. Great. So great. given I'm 66 years old, I feel very lucky mm -hmm. to be able to do it. But, but thank wonderful. you. Thanks. But it's great having the bike path, too. We've had it for five I years. Know. And most of my riding, not all of it, most of it is on the bike path. I go from my house on Drew Circle to the bike path, do about 10 to 14 miles a day. and before you know it, it adds up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it really helps my health because I just had a checkup yesterday and you know, my pulse is good, everything is good, all the blood tests. I really think exercise is, a, and eating kind of well is of paramount importance. But I, I eat kind of what I want, but it's the exercise that, <laughs> and all the pasta, the pasta <laughs> basil does it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we have a few more minutes and we have a lot to talk about, but uh, this is we're taping this two days after the midterm elections and in Massachusetts we had a huge election which I was up m much later than my bedtime this past Tuesday watching the results of particularly a governor's race and uh, in that race uh, Charlie Baker the Republican uh, he won this year he ran four years ago but he, this time he won he defeated Martha Coakley by approximately 48.4 percent to 46.7 percent um, any comments about the gubernatorial race or campaign or anything, quickly? That was a good race. Okay. Yeah. Needless to say, uh, it's probably it was the only major office the Republicans took in in this state. <clears throat> and as a Republican, this is a this is a tough state to get Republicans elected. Yeah. So I think he did a great job. He was able to actually get some uh, endorsements from the mayor of Lowell and to mm -hmm. rep. Nangle, David Nangle, and and that that's that's pretty good. I mean, I, I take who, my hat off to those people because yeah, well, who are Democrats, yeah. because that's you know potentially some people aren't going to like it, but I think uh, he was able to reach out and people felt that for whatever reason, for what he said, that he was the best person for the state. So I I think that's good, and we did pick up, I think six or eight new state reps mm -hmm. and two state senators. So and again. I don't think it's good to have an unbalanced legislature. Right. I think because you get, it's too easy to just decide not to discuss things and to just railroad things through. And I think the same thing would happen, I think if we had all Republicans, mm -hmm. it would be bad. I mean, they might start off noble, but the longer they were there, the more tendency to jam things through and to not be, you know, not to have things show, not to be transparent. You know, I think that's human nature, yeah. okay? And I think if you're, e even if you're in, in any office too long, you, you take for granted, you don't do it as seriously as when you're new. When you're new, you're idealistic, and uh -huh. same thing I think happens with a job, any yeah. job. You know, yes. when you start off, you get full of enthusiasm. Well, Later on, it's like, oh, this happened before, uh, you let it go, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. <laughs> right. Any other comments about the gubernatorial race? I see. Art. It, was just, it was interesting that he was able, I think he was able to articulate a better vision of where for mm -hmm. for where he's going to take the state with, and, and people are still, even though the economy's recovered a lot since the Great Recession, people are still very nervous about jobs. Yes. Yeah. And he was able to really use that to his advantage and talk yeah. about that, so. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And plus, as a Republican, I was shocked when I, I, I got the Boston Globe online and read it every morning. Boston Globe endorsement yeah. there for the Republican, Charlie yeah. Baker, who's really a moderate Republican, which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. You know, he's in, uh, supporting of gay, gay rights and gay marriage. Um, yeah. And he was very good. I watched most of the debates, which I thought were fascinating. And he was very strongly talking about that when one of the gubernatorial candidates, an independent, 
uh, put down gays really yeah, in a terrible yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And Charlie got right back. And yeah. I think I think he might have said Charlie might have said his brother might be gay or something yeah, his brother in a relationship. Is, his brother and I, I really thought right. that was great. So uh, then the endorsement of the Globe, though, I thought was huge for a Republican. Yeah. But he's a moderate Republican, in the mold of Bill Weld kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that sort of Republican has done well in yeah. Massachusetts, right. at least at, at the gubernatorial right. level. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. it, it, it's I think you. You don't see quite so many of them in the in the state rep positions, right. but it's probably true of the Democrats as well that that the, those positions tend to be much more local. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, th you know, I thought um, both candidates pretty much portrayed themselves as centrist, um, yeah. and uh, and so it was it was almost a coin flip, uh, and and I think you saw that in the results. Right. Yeah, um, very close. I, I yeah, was yeah. I, I saw some of the debates while. People had some good one-liners. I never really heard a, an overarching vision from right. either of the two major candidates about how they wanted to transform the state. I, I, I heard both of them essentially say, "I can manage it." Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, it's at that point you, you it does become a little bit of a per personality or a right. popularity right. contest, and right. uh, you know, we'll we'll work with. Charlie, just just yeah. like we worked with Duvall, and yeah. hopefully he'll increase local yeah. aid for us. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's the important thing. I, but I think that's a good point. I mean, I, I, I think that elections like this make me feel really good about Massachusetts as a state when they don't have to be changing. And also the, the balance and the parity in the politics is important that it is, you know, you could say all the politics is the personal, but I, I you know, as, as, as independent, Democrat, Republican, I, mean, I think the, the state shows that it's not uh, it's not one way or the other, and that we have a pretty strong base, and and citizens have concerns, but that it's you know I don't think many Democrats were so devastated, and yeah. and likewise I don't think any Republicans felt this surge of I think and that sh I think that shows a really strong a strong base at the state we have now and a belief in the in the gubernatorial process. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It may be that the biggest change to come out of the election was Evan Falchuk getting his three <laughs> percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To so that's it, true though. It because that's a good point. because if you start to if you start to look at a, a, a third party, a yeah. third way, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it does seem like there's some room for growth there. Yes, yeah. And yeah. he spent about a million and a half <laughs> of his own dollars on the <laughs> campaign. He was on this show about six months ago, Evan Falchuk. Uh, I'm glad he did get the three percent after spending that kind of money. Did you check, I mean, geez, did you check the chair yeah. after he got up? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway, he got that. So it's called the United Independent Party. So we might be hearing more about that mm. quickly. If we could just quickly talk, I want to get all the other races I was going to talk about together because we only have a few minutes left. And I want to get into the questions if we can. But also, uh, State Senator Mike Bear won re-election over Sandy Martinez. Uh, State Representative Jim Marcero defeated Dennis Galvin. And State Representative Corey Atkins defeated Kenneth Van Tassel, who was a young libertarian from Chumpsford running for the first time. So any comments about these uh, state races? They're all Democrats, and they defeated either Republicans or, in one case, a libertarian. I, the only thing I'd say, really, is that Van Tassel, he, he wound up with something like 20%. Uh, which is which is better than Falchuk's three yeah. percent, but I think it does show some room for growth. Yes. Um, yeah. That 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 people are not necessarily looking to vote a straight party ticket at this point, oh, yeah. um, and and with the right candidate, uh, you you might get somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, shall we go to the ballot questions, which are the sure. most interesting I think thing to talk about? This was a close one. The gas tax indexing. There was a question: Should we? repeal the gas tax indexing, which was to adjust it for inflation every year. Um, and the yes to repeal this was 52.9%. The no was 47.1%. So it was fairly close. But now it looks like we'll have no automatic gas tax increases. Right. So the state legislature can and hopefully will vote on it every year, whether or not they mm -hmm. want to adjust it for inflation, the gas tax, mm -hmm. that is. Any thoughts about that? Uh, it's a couple of things. Uh, one thing, I, I think the question was very confusing. Oh, yeah. the, uh, you know, there were probably a lot of people that voted opposite yeah, right. of what, uh, well, but hopefully uh, it And the fell. casino one as well. I thought yeah. both of them yeah. were, there's they were like, almost yeah. flip-flop. There's a lot of research yeah. that shows that how you pose the question. I could, mm -hmm. I yeah. went, I mean, even, you know, I went in there and was like, well, mm -hmm. yes means no and no means right. yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But, but in any case. But, but, but yeah. Go but, ahead. But, but on that one particular, um, people are probably surprised that I voted um, to to re repeal the automatic indexing because I feel like the legislature should have to make right. that vote every year rather than have it be automatic. Right. Um, you know, I just think that's the fair way to do it. Okay. I mean, we don't automatically increase um, 
sales tax or anything like that, although that's a little bit different because that is a percentage and yeah, not a <laughs> fixed rate. So it does. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe they should do the gas tax that way too, but right now that's not how it is. Right. Um, so I, I feel like we need to be transparent about that, about yeah. how it's going to increase, how much it's going to increase and when. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I would only say it's, it's kind of a, it's a matter and, and I'm not sure, I'm not how well I'm versed across the state, but it's really about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. our bridges, sure. our roads, and so now the legislature is going to have to, before they had that three percenter, you know, ma map to the inflation, um, to get that funds, and now it's going to just create a, a platform where they're going to have to vote, and that's probably just going to create some more <laughs> dialogue about it, which I think is good, I mean, because that time, I mean, I think people are, what, what worries people is tying it to, tying a tax to inflation without it being, and you know, sure. the standard, federal standard deduction is another place where you have that that's not tied to voting. It just happens and it's adjusted. But so in general, I think it's just going to open up. I, mean, I don't. I think Massachusetts is not in the top of infrastructure. I think we have a lot of infrastructure needs. We're at the bottom of the country in terms of getting our bridges and roads up to par. And this is just going to create an avenue for that dialogue to happen. Yeah, but yes. I think one of the problems is the lack of trust. I mean, mm -hmm. they. They take the gas tax and it gets commingled with the general fund, and then we find out that. We're buying a whole bunch of rail cars from China for the MBTA out of the, yeah. you know, that tax, the gas. So it seems like what you do is you, I shouldn't say if you're, you let the bridges and, and roads crumble and then you say, oh, we need that, okay. And then I think people would say if you could pigeonhole it and say this tax is going right here for this bridge, that's one thing. Yeah. But you say it comes in and then it goes off here and it goes off well, there and yeah. some gets, and there's some question of some money being held back that, that hasn't yeah. been released for the local, yeah. you know, so part of it is a, tr you know, is a trust. If you, yeah. if you trust people, if you give them money, you want to feel that what they're doing is the right thing with it and not, you know, not find out that our, our uh, cost of maintaining roads, I think, is about five or six times the average of the country. Right. So you've got other things that are problems. So you've got to address some of those first. Yes. Yeah. So wow. I think that's, I think that well, we played into it. A minute left. Any quick comments about the casino? It looks like we're going to have some casinos here in Massachusetts. That one by about sixty percent to yeah, forty percent. Right. That question three. My, Any quick comments? My only all? quick comment on that is, um, and the voters find is that the, the the law when it was passed in 2011 said four to five casino. I'm worried about that. Four. It, it opens up spaces for four to five in the state, and I don't think we're big enough to have capacity to allow for that. Not that that would happen, but now the, that the only thing that the law allows is for that. So, yeah. five casinos in Massachusetts seems like a lot. Oh, yes, I agree. Um, I well, agree. also the, the timing is strange. Right now, we're getting on board, and, and casinos are closing throughout yeah. the Atlantic country. City. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is probably something we should have done yeah. ten years oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I, know. I, mean, I mean, that's that's yeah. not a big. Uh, you know, so I'm not right. sure that they're, like you say that they're going to be that successful. But hey. If People yeah. want to put the money up. Well, one good thing is they're going to be spread out. Rather, Atlantic City made a mistake. I mean, there were all there. Right. Three casinos in Atlantic City were closed within the past month yeah. or two. And uh, they were right next to each other. Yeah. At least we're going to have one maybe in New Bedford, maybe one in Everett, one in near Springfield, right. maybe. And so I'm glad at least they might be spread out, you know. Um, I. I hope I win if I go there, but <laughs> you know that's but, what they're counting on. Tom. <laughs> yeah, I know because think yeah. this Steve Wynn's going to spend like a billion dollar casino or something in Everett. It's crazy, and where do they make that from? People who waste their money gambling, yeah. right? So, yeah. and uh, I usually don't do that. I'm not a huge gambler or anything. Just on this show, I gamble on the panel, and it was a great panel. I, I won the bet tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Mike Rigney. Thank you, Tom. Here, thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank Don't you, Tom. Choose. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat Wojcic. Thank you. Thanks Good luck me. with the campaign. Thank you. Re-election if you missed it 20 minutes ago. There you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John Sousa. Thank you for having and me. And hopefully it won't be uh, every 10 years. That's you know, right. That's right. We have to do this sooner. Yeah. And thank you, Pete, Pete, Paul, uh, Paul Mahalides. Mahalides. It's perfect. Great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, Paul, uh, for being on the show. And thanks for this wonderful camera crew. Right. Uh, Tom and um, what was her name again? And Larry. Let Meredith. 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 Thank you, Meredith. Sorry. And uh, thank you, our director, Pete Padula. If you have any comments on the show, please send me an email at tcristiano at comcast.net. Also, at the end of this month, we're going to be taping another Animal Companion special with six uh, human beings. We're going to have a rabbit, a parrot, dogs, cats. It's going to be great. 
So please tune in for that. And I hope to see you at, on Veterans Day at Veterans uh, Park on November 11th at 11 a.m. Ciao.